Hi guys, and welcome to another video with me, Mike, aka Damn Profit. Today is a video that I've wanted to do for a long time, but have held off. I've wanted to give this a chance, and I think now since September the 6th, through to now we're in November, we're coming to the beginning of December, you know, September, October, November, we're two, two, and, two and a bit months in, I now have to make this video. So, for all of you that don't know, and, you know, for those new viewers that may do not know, and for those old viewers that may do know, uh, I am a huge Destiny 1 fan. A huge Destiny 1 fan. I have sang... 1700 hours into on PlayStation and about six to seven hundred hours on Xbox in the original one, you know, combined up to about 2200 2300 hours. You know, I've pretty much done everything Destiny One had to offer. There was a few exotics I didn't do, but that was just time and work and a life generally got in the way. But I'm not too fussed. The overall experience for me in Destiny One was positive. I had nothing but praise for people to get involved, and now. Some of you are going to look at that and they're going to say, well, yeah, but the game wasn't baked. There was no story at the beginning. You know, blah, 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 blah. Destiny turned out in the end to not necessarily be a game about the actual game. It turned into an event, a social event. There was three times a week I was guaranteed that every day, in those three times, I would be online with my friends. And we would have the Tuesday night reset to go on and to get the nightfalls done and then we would have raid day you know on Saturday and then we'd have days where we'd just jump on and do crucible and that was what destiny became it wasn't necessarily about the content you know it was great having the taken king drop and rise of iron and having uh the the DLC coming in first and you know the dark dark below was great for us to kind of pull together as a, a group of mates and people I've met online and you know it was a huge social event it became a social gathering place it was effectively became the new pub the new bar where we would meet on a weeknight and go and have the chat about life and things and family and all the other stuff that you would kind of do and, you know, tied around this kind of community and social event was a game. And, yeah, you know, Destiny had its faults. You know, in year one, there was bits missing and, you know, the, the story wasn't fleshed out. And But, you know, you did get cool things and cool moments in doing it. You know, when you was first beat Atheon doing the Vault of Glass, it was kind of it was a huge moment. You remember that. You enjoy that. And there was always the times when you would get Fatebringer or... Galahorn would drop, or the first time you got Icebreaker from doing a public, you know, from doing Nightfall, there was always that key thing. And, the, and when old Nightfalls used to use die and go back to the beginning, you'd have to start again. You had that little air of caution. Then, as you grew in rank and stature, and you you get more blase about things, and suddenly you started find out that you started jaunting through three in one night, and you were having fun. And you got strange coins. Zer turned up, and for the first twelve months, Zer turning up was a huge thing. You know, it was the first on Friday to find out what Zer's got, what's he bringing, what weapons has he got. It was just cool to have all your mates all going into this one thing week after week after week, and 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 having this this thing. You know, it, it reminded me of COD of old, of Modern Warfare Two, of of World at War, of having these social social events that were tied to video games. So, here we are. You know, as you look, I'm go on to the YouTube channel, go and have a look at my Twitch channel, look at all the VODs and videos and story things and all the things I've done for Destiny 1, and you'll see that it was a whale of a time was had. I even did a very emotional goodbye video because Destiny 2 was coming, and it was a few days before the launch, and I said goodbye to Destiny 1 that we probably wouldn't boot you up because the new whole, the new grail was coming, the new chosen one that how i was going to spend the next three years of my life it made me evaluate what i was going to be doing with video games going forward you know i i love playing different types of video games but for the past three years i hadn't played anything other than destiny 
And, you know, I had tried a few different games. Destiny was my main focus. I'd sunk so many hours, so much of my life into the first one that when the second one was coming up, it was like... And, and, and the point to make is I'd sank 2,300 hours. And I was probably the lowest numbered person in our group for sinking hours in. There was people I was playing with that had done 3,000, 3,500 hours. Huge amounts of time and effort put in to these characters. So Destiny 2... There's even one of my videos where there's me, Mr. Jobberman, and, and Jess, Jelly Tot Jess, and a couple of others where we're actually saying goodbye to Destiny 1, and we were, we were doing a stream, about a Bungie stream about Destiny 2, and the, one of the comments Jobberman says is, you know, we're about to find out where we spend the next three years of our life. So, two and a half months down the road, where are we? Well... They fucked it up. There's no doubt about it. There, there's, there's, I just, I, I'm baffled by certain things in this game that just make me either want, there's some bits that I absolutely adore and you just think, oh my god, we have moved forward from Destiny 1. Those things are few and far between, but there are there. They are there. Then there's the rest of it. And... This is the real problem with Destiny 2 now. The, so, let's, 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 let's look at it on the improvements first of all. So, number one, there's a cohesive story. That, yes, is very melancholy and yes, there is elements of, of kind of, oh, we're here one moment and we've got no light. And then all of a sudden we get our light back and then all of a sudden we're on this big quest to go and kill this bad guy that took years of planning to capture the uh, the, the Traveller and... Blah, 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 blah. And within a matter of months, we've destroyed the whole army. We've, we've blown Gaul up. We've saved the day and the tower gets rebuilt. Fine. Yeah, there is some elements of the story which, pacing-wise, just doesn't seem to make any sense. You know, we, we lose all our powers. You know, the scene where we where the Gaul traps the Traveller's Light. And, and, you know, spoilers. Let's just get it right. There are going to be some spoilers in this. Not too much. I'm not going to go into depth because... We're down the road now that everyone should have played the story. And if not, I'm not going to go into any real bad things. I'm not going to go into any real t twists or anything like that. But Gaul captures the light. You lose your powers. There's a perfect moment, though, for reminding us, as Bungie, as what it would be like to play as a normal human. We're not a guardian anymore. We didn't have our light. We'd lost our light. Perfect opportunity. Why the fuck not? Couldn't you let us play the game for a, a couple of missions where we were just human, wearing body armor, and it would remind us that we are fragile little things in this galaxy full of big, bad, nasty things. It would have made the, the enemy hit counters harder to damage, so that it would have meant we could have been more strategic. It would have meant that we would have had to have played as a fire team, because we would have to go in as standard humans now fighting the oppressive the the uh, the cabal or we go into a mission where you know when we go into the dark forest the take and come but was it just us we're a little human and we've got to defend ourselves and we fight to get our light back but no we basically get our light back within a matter of minutes of going to the farm and we get our light back and then suddenly we can smash everything. And then suddenly it's just a grind mission. It's just about playing the story out. Now, the the story itself, while in a very rudimental form... And we're not talking any Halo 1 level of storytelling. We're not talking, you know, a kind of... Don't be expecting a great Hollywood cinematic, you know, a cohesive story with the best actors you've ever known. It's not. You know, there are good actors in there. You know, we've got Cade Six, as everyone knows he's Nathan Fillion. We've got Bill Knightley as the speaker. You know, we've, um, I think Gaul is the voice of the guy that played Arbiter in Halo 2 and Halo, you know, in the Halo series. So, you know, you've got real good quality actors, and all the normal ones come back. I, Cora Zavala, uh, uh, all come back and reprise their own. Holiday comes back, you know, for the very small part that she actually plays in things. And then you've got Tess Everest, and you know you've got the gunsmith. You know, it, it, all the regular characters come back, and the stories. You know, the, for me, there is the Imperial mission. I think it was Sunspot is the mission. It is one of the best story missions, just for the sheer scope that they put it into. 
of the the level itself so there's lots of things they do right and one of the things one of the things i would advise you on doing bungie released the soundtrack for destiny 2 for free on youtube get it go and get it because if there's one thing that is absolutely spot on in this game that improves on absolutely everything from the first game it is the soundtrack it is stunning it is haunting while upbeat and it, it, it every track you just read the title and you'll know exactly which part of the game is which part of the mission which part of this it is the the soundtrack is second to none it is up there with hollywood level sound production sh systems I mean, I mean soundtracks it is brilliant utterly utterly brilliant the gunplay is still bungee you still you pick up a controller you start to shoot and start to run around and it feels exactly like Bungie, uh, Destiny 1 did and that's a good thing you wanted that continuation of you know maybe they could have added something a bit more dynamic in like an extra roll or a boost or some two stage running or the ability to crawl and roll or something I don't know or, or shoot from cover which they did to some extent but not fully not implemented as in proper pop, pop your head round corners and keep popping off as you can in like the new Call of Duty World War 2 uh so, you know, there were some good things. And, you know, they streamlined the progression system. You know, it, it was very simple now for a new player to pick up the story, run with it. They didn't feel baggaged and, and weighed down like they did before uh, with Destiny 1. As, as the time went on, the more lore that they all got piled on top. You know, you didn't need to know all that. This, would be, this was an ideal platform for new players to come in, pick up the controller, get into the world of Destiny and enjoy Either the story mode, the PvP, you could do the nightfalls, the challenges, unlocking certain things. So it was a good starting point. They'd improved on the story, they'd improved on this element of pick up, pick up and play. They'd improved upon uh, the sound especially. You know, guns feel like guns, they sound like guns. The bad guys sound like bad guys. Now the Taken and the Fallen and... And all the characters within the Destiny world now feel different. There's new enemy classes in there as well. The Vex are very predominant again. And, you know, there's different types of Vex. So everything felt individual, but at the same time, normal. Like you did from Destiny 1. So, a few good things, you know. And, you know, in the first couple of months, you could, all, you could forgive if there was some... You know, the story pacing was always kind of... Like, yeah, this was a new direction for Destiny. They wanted to tell the story through the missions. That's always been the case. It was in the first game. The story might have not been cohesive, but if you did piece the bits together, which was one of the things I think some of the Destiny 1 players liked, was that we weren't spoon-fed all the information. You had to go and find Grimoire cards and Lost Ghosts and all this other stuff to build the story out. And yeah, you know, it would have been nice to have some of the key points like the Book of Sorrows, you know, a bit more of that in the main game and having that in an original story to be more cohesive and actually make more sense. But then there was an element which the, the Grimoire cards were nice to... You, if you pick something up, you could go back and reread and look at your entire exp Grimoire deck and understand that... There you go. Those, those are the story if you want to piece it together. So, Destiny 2, negative points. Now, we've we've got... A few things to cover off, so sit down, buckle up. This is gonna get emotional, physically angry. I'm, I'm gonna. This is a, a fan. Please let Bungie watch this video. Please, someone send it to a developer at Bungie. I know they're doing some things to fix some of these things, but God, you've got to understand the pain we're feeling at the moment. Negatives number one: the story in places looks like it was written by a ten-year-old. There are just whole sections which were just kind of like. Uh, Rick in The Walking Dead. You know, suddenly it was like one minute you're a super guardian with all these powers. We've we've literally destroyed gods. Oryx, we've took Oryx down. We've 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 oh god, we've took down so many monsters and so many powerful magical demons, fallen leaders. Oh, you name it. You know, Skolas. All those types of super destructive leadership beings, the Taken, the Fallen, the Vex, Atheon, we've took down a god of time for, for god's sake 
Gold turns up, takes all our powers away, and a piece of the shard of the Traveller fell off and no one noticed. Nobody knew that that shard was there. In the, in the EDZ, there's a great big piece of the friggin' thing sitting there. No one thought, let's go and have a little look at that. The bad guys didn't even do that, but in Destiny 1, they managed to steal a shard and was... And the... the, the, the the, the, uh, oh god, I'm getting so angry. It is just... I'm not even going to go into it. it. There's just whole bits of story where it's just like, you're chopped on the back of the neck. It's just like, and a month later. The timeline just seems to jump. It doesn't give it any credence. It's just kind of like the easiest way. It goes back to Destiny 1. I haven't got time to explain why I haven't got time to explain. So one minute I'm a guardian, I'm walking through the mountains, following a bird that's going somewhere, and it's like a month later. It's like, well, I've been following the bird for a month. What, the bird didn't land and eat or fly off in a different direction? It was just dragging me along to go and meet Hawthorne. And, you know, there's little bits like that in the story. And also as well, the main bad guy, Gaul. So, and, and the counsellor. Oh, God, they just, they created these brilliant characters along the way that would have been perfect bosses before we got to Gaul. You could have had a general, you could have had a senior general, then you could have had the counsellor, uh, the, the chancellor character that you would have gone on and fought, and then at the end you could have had Gaul. But it was just kind of like, so this guy that's helped this little runt of a, of a, of a cabal turn into like this epic leader, the emperor of the cabal, or, or the, the, the reigning leadership of the cabal, who then kicks the emperor off onto a boat into space and says, hey, you know, you know, you naff off, don't worry, you're a bit nuts, but we're going to sort it all out, and we're going to go and capture the light, and then we'll be the light carriers, and then we'll be the new guardians, and then we'll look after shit. He plans all this, he gets the whole of the Red Legion focused on capturing the Traveller, to capture it with an amazing device that nobody saw coming. I mean, the Guardians have literally reactivated the Moon, Venus. Uh, they've got the Dreadnought on Saturn that they're still exploring. Uh, we had Mercury. And nobody saw this fleet coming. But all the satellites went down and it was literally a few minutes before the attack happens. It's all in the opening story. It's been on the internet for months. I'm not going to cover that as, off as a spoiler. So, a whole fleet of, of Cabal ships managed to get through the solar system with nobody spotting them on no other planets, with no other outposts, and all the ships flying around, and they managed to get into the solar, into Earth, blow the tower up, capture the Traveler's Light, kill off all the Lights to all Guardians, wipe out loads and loads of Guardians, and do all this, and then the main fucking bad guy, then just stops he captures the speaker goes up into a big tower somewhere on, on his capital ship and sits in there with his chancellor having a chat to the speaker about how is he going to get the traveler's light so there is that flaw and not only that just as it gets to the point where you you do one of the best missions in the game is the imperial is, is where you have to go and disable this ship that's about to destroy suns. I mean, it even says in the beginning of the game, Gaul, destroyer of worlds, he will rather blow up a solar system once he's dealt with it and move on to somewhere else. And, and, and he's got a ship that's capable of it that can jump in hyperspace or whatever it is or the other space. And it can literally blow... It draws its power... It does something to the core of the sun and it destroys it. It blows the whole galaxy up. Fantastic. And blows the un you know, the galaxy up and moves on. And he just suddenly then goes, fuck it, you know what? This guy, this guy, my, my buddy, the dude that's helped me get to where I am. Fuck him. Chop. So he's, he's basically, he's number one, walks in, kills the speaker, and then goes like, oh, this, is, this isn't right. So he kills his best mate, and then goes off on a little rant. He then challenges the la the Guardian with the light to come and have a fight with him on his Imperial ship. So you've fought through all the Cabal. You've got right to the very end. You've got to the point. Cade 6 has had his arm blown off. Zavala's been smacked about and beaten up. Ikora's knackered because she's been shot or something. You're the only Guardian that can save the day. Not Hawthorne or all the other Guardians, but just you. You get boshed off onto the capital ship to go and take Gaul down. He then takes the light on board, gets all the powers, and get 
then decides that the best way to use these powers is to run round after you and then jump in the air and use your, your own supers against you. But then what they do to, to aid in you defeating Gaul, who's obviously one of the toughest bosses you've ever faced in your life because the mechanics are take so many things to work out, is that then he jumps up in the air, you can hide in a tunnel and shoot him in the toe. So the first time I finished it, I thought maybe I just it was new, it was early, and maybe the code had not been glitched. A few people had complained. Reddit was full of complaints. There was also complaints from other places. And we literally thought, yeah, all right, well, maybe they can just update the code. No. They, did, they said that there was something wrong. It shouldn't have been that easy. They did some updates, and it was still that easy. Two other characters did it exactly the same way. I even got to my third character and thought, no, fuck it, I ain't even going in the tunnels. I'm just going to run around outside. I got hit with supers, with the, the, the solar swords. I got hit with the purple goo. I got hit with lightning. He was stomping around and all that. You know, I even got to the end. The end boss is such a joke, you could punch him. I think I killed him on the last go. Not even with the rocket launcher. I punched him and he died. And then he comes back and then the traveller blows up and the traveller reawakens and kills off this spectral form of him. So not even when they do show you a cool boss and you're like, oh, thank, thank fuck for that. There he is. That's the bad guy we want. That's the thing I've been waiting for. That's the transformation. It's like fighting Dr. Bruce Banner and then suddenly when you fight, think you beat him, he transforms into the Hulk and you're like, shit. This is what it was all about. This is the super powered fight. This is like fighting Clark Kent and you give him a smack and you knock him down and then suddenly rips his shirt off and you think, oh, shit, he's Superman. No, what am I going to do now? Where's that kryptonite recharging gun I've got? No. The Traveller just blows up and kills him. So even when they do offer you the glimpse of it becoming truly great and you thought it might be, you know, maybe not on par with an Atheon or a raid level boss, but, you know, one of the bosses in the original game, no. So... Through the game as well, you know, plus points is areas. You know, the EDZ, uh, Nessus, Io, and Titan. Titan being the smallest one, but there's lots of little nooks and crannies to explore down in there and down in the planetarium area, the solarium area. Uh, but, you know, going around Nessus and Io, there's loads of little tunnels, etc., etc. And we get introduced to a new element, adventures. And, you know, if you you get these little blue adventures, which are like premium adventures, and they go off and you can get such weapons like the Midan multi-tool and uh, Scrug or whatever it is, the, the Scug, the pistol. Uh, they're pretty cool. You know, they're quite challenging. You know, when you're at like 220, it's a 243, and you want to give yourself a bit of a challenge, you can just bosh around and have a crack. But, you know, 20 light levels down, you could still do it easily. The 243 is just there to say it's going to be a bit challenging. But if you play Destiny 1, you'll get through it, no problem. The rest of the adventures are all about the grind just to get your character levels up. That is it. There's there's no real challenge there. You know, you get introduced to some really cool stories. And the adventures is more of the story bit. The little bit behind what you're doing. That's really cool. It opens up different ways of storytelling within Destiny. And I like that. Then we have Lost Sectors now. Where you can go and go into these holes in the ground, or you can go through little doors, and then they'll lead to little side missions where you get these caches of of things that you can pick up. And in all honesty, the lost, the lost. Oh God, it pains me to say this. These lost trails. It it was an opportunity for Bungie to chuck in mini nightfalls, so that you could go into these lost areas, lost zones, lost sectors. And, and have a really challenging fight. You could go in and be little mini bosses. And maybe a mechanic. They could take you 10 minutes. 50, 20 minutes at a time. Just to go in and bosh around. And at the end of it. You could have got a, a legendary gun. Or a legendary piece of armour. Or you know the fact that this could be a lost set of armour. And you've got to do all the lost sectors. In an area before you got this. You know historic legendary lost set. Of armor, but no, 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 no. The le the enemy bossy, the enemies inside are the same levels as the enemies outside, and you can you get to a certain level, you know, you get above two sixty or you get above two forty, and you can blow through a lost sector in about three minutes. 
you can just go in and wipe the floor. You get a super up. You get the electricity super with your with your warlock, and you can just go in and fuck everyone up. You don't even need to shoot your gun. You can, you can just run through the whole level, get to the last boss. I'll get to like the the elite boss at the end. Fuck him up. Get the cash key and the cash and run out. So there was loads of opportunities in this to have a great game, to have a really multi-tiered, multi-level game that would help you through your progress to get to the point where then you could get raid ready. Now, Destiny raids have generally been good. The Dark Blue is probably the weakest one. You know, Wrath of the Machine was really good. I still think the benchmark for everything is going to be the Vault of Glass because, you know, the, there was so much stuff in there that so many people had no idea what was going on and it took years for it to be resolved. That, you know, it was always going to be challenging for this. And the Leviathan has been good. It has been one of the quickest ones that have been solved. You know, watching on the stream, I think it was about eight hours in total. You know, even Wrath of the Machine took 12 to do. Uh, the Dark Below, I think, on the first time was about 16 hours. And Vault of Glass was nearly 24 hours, I think. It was a 20 hours playing the game before it was resolved. So, you know, it it just goes to show you that the evolution of the Destiny player as well has meant that we understand mechanics more. And the, the Leviathan raid itself is really good. It is really good. And it's a nice challenge and it makes you think. And, you know, the dog bits are pain in the ass. But once you've kind of done it a few times, you know what's going on. But still, it start, stopped being play by numbers. And it started to just be kind of, you know, stand here, shoot this, rotate round. Da, 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 ba, 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 and it starts to become a bit monotonous after a month and a bit. Uh, that now... The raid itself, like I said, is really good. There's different mechanical levels. If you've not played one, this is a really good opportunity with guided games as well to jump in with a crew and they'll take you through it. You get it done. It's it's really good in that regards that you now you know we're, the Bungie have thought about how to bring casual players into doing stuff like raid level activities. Uh, Nightfalls. I hate, I hate them. With a, with an absolute passion, the nightfalls before were challenging. They were hard. They would. They were hard in the first reiteration of Destiny until we kind of got to a point where our light level and burns were. You know, the burns really kicked in. You know, the original Nightfalls when you died were reset to the beginning. Were fucking hard. They made you think and work as a team and communicate and everyone coordinated their supers of what they were going to do and how they were going to use it. And you know. Once we finally got Titan Bubbles, you know, you always had a Titan with a bubble and then you'd have your electricity art guy as your warlock and then the hunter would have a run void bow to tie everything up and then your warlock could go in and fuck shit up or the, 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 the Titans would take hammers and smash things up that way. But God almighty, the one thing it didn't have was a timer and a timer suggests that a nightfall can be finished in that time. Oh. It's just, and then the the one nightfall that didn't have a timer had a glitch, and you could break it. And the ones that did have a timer, you could glitch and you could break it. So it become ultimately pointless in the end anyway. And the burns were completely pointless. And then they put the, the, these whole things called raid challenge, uh, uh, nightfall challenges to go in to get all these bits and bobs. And do like three sets, you know, kill so many bad guys, or do it in under five minutes. And you know, if you do it under five minutes, you do a prestige nightfall, and that prestige nightfall then is a little bit harder. Uh, now, I don't have a problem with the mechanic changes, you know, adding the timing. Okay, great. Well, that becomes the challenge now is to get it finished in that time. Great. Thumbs up. Okay, I can live with that. The the maybe the the glitching. I can live with that. The amount of times we glitched the original Nightfalls with me and my team uh, on Vex Dregs and Sausage Rolls as our original PlayStation 2 crew, we used to glitch all the time. And and an LDR5001 with armor piercing rounds, you just stand next to the door, I could shoot things on the other side of the wall. You know, come on. There's the. I can live with glitches. I can live with the mechanical changes. I can live that you can burn through it in 10 minutes because we used to do that anyway after a while with Nightfall to farm strange coins every week. The one thing that... And, and this is going to segue nicely into the bit that is going to be the main rant about this. We're 30 minutes in. I think we've covered off the fact that the game itself... And I think we'll do a little mini wrap-up now before we hit the main gripe. 
Nightfalls are still the same. There's just a few dynamics changes and the maps are broken. And, and, and you can glitch them. But that's fine. That's part of Nightfall. You know, I don't mind that. The night, the strikes themselves that form Nightfalls, excellent. They really are. Uh, the, the levels themselves are huge. There's loads of things to do. There's loads of content to go and do. The public events drop more frequently. You can do a standard event, an heroic event. And each one's got its own little challenge. And once you've worked the mechanic out, then you can just go straight into heroic events all the time and you can start doing all that stuff. There's uh, there's lost sectors to do. And when you're on your early grind going up to, say, 265, 270, then lost sectors are kind of a bonuses to that. And adventures are brilliant. I, I love the adventure stories. They take you off to different parts of the maps and they tell you different stories. Uh, the story itself, while in places, can feel a bit meh, it's a bit cheesy. The fact that the story is completely cohesive, it all follows a process... It's eight hours long, so it's three times that, you know, two, four, six, eight, it's four times out of a two hour film. So, you know, you're getting your money's worth for content wise, but it's just the bad guys suffer from a severe lack of daunting, threatening personality, and they just turn into this noise that pops up in a cutscene. And, you know, Bungie does treat us a little bit stupid that when they introduce Gaul, it's always in the little cutscene. It always has some symbol, that you know, Gaul symbol that pops up for the Red Legion. They can't just trust us to be adults. You know, when I, when Oryx first appeared, you got the sense that Oryx was a big demon-esque badass that can destroy entire galaxies and you had to stop him, but he could really just squish you like a bug. And with Gaul, you don't get that feeling. You just think he's like, oh, he's technologically advanced, but as a person, you know, as a bad guy, he's an absolute friggin' idiot. He's not got any goal, you know, goal to him. <laughs> so overall, the game itself, Black Friday's recently just happened. You know, I think on some days it was twenty nine quid. Uh, it might have been nineteen pound one day. I know you could pick up the digital deluxe edition for like seventy quid with all the season pass and everything for the base game at thirty quid. Can't fault it at all it is a good game for 30 quid to just pick up do the story missions do a bit of grinding do some of the public events maybe have a crack at a couple of nightfalls and at least have one attempt at the raid uh, if you're not into doing the grind then just game to nightfall level ready you, you'll still enjoy yourself and you'll have plenty of people to play with and you might just get it hooked enough to kind of get you to raid level but once you've done the raid ones you 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 know you can run it multiple times you know people keep popping up uh, and, and this will lead into the second section but you know there is a prestige red but that will tie nicely into uh, the next section we're going to move on to so the biggest problem and I'm going to tear this into the microphone the biggest problem and in fact I'm going to move the microphone to here and I'm going to move it around so it's looking at me and I'm going to say the biggest problem with Destiny 2 the loot system and reward system a fucked. Full stop. Not if, not but, not mildly broken, not something that needs tweaking. The reward system, the bit you play, the grind for is fucked. Completely fucked. Broken. Shattered, knackered, busted, ruined. It is it is a shambles com in comparison to Destiny 1. The thing with Destiny 1 is that people used to get annoyed with was the randomised rolls on guns. Is that you could repeat a map 20 times and you would eventually get a god roll gun. But you could do the map 100 times and you might never get a god roll gun. But that was the point of the grind. That was the very binding essence of why we played the game. On top of that... I've not even gone into PvP, and we'll, we'll approach that to the end. Let's just look at PvE content first of all, because that's the big thing I play. The, the, the reward system in Destiny 2 is the worst one I've ever played for a first-person shooter. It really is. The thing with Halo, you played Halo, you got a cutscene. You then played a bit more, you got a cutscene. Every cutscene was the production value that added to the story. With the Destiny first-person game... And the, and the story mission, yeah, you get some cutscenes that go through and it all adds up, but the end game content was all about getting that one thing, that one gun, that one set of armour, that one exotic drop, that one thing doing the night falls that made sense, that made you want to do the same map four weeks in a run on as a nightfall. And it was, 
Omni Girl. You would do Omni Girl loads of times because there was a specific thing you would get from it. And in this one now, they've standardised all the guns. So you get a legendary drop of a machine gun and it's got high impact. You can get that gun as many times as you want and the stats will be all the same. There might be some additional thing like void grenades or charge quicker or blah 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 and it has a minimal impact on your actual performance of your character. But the 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 rest of it is bollocks. It's utter bollocks. The very purpose of doing a Nightfall every week was to get strange coins. Strange coins would then allow you to buy shit from Xur. And usually for the first two weeks, you didn't have enough. But if you ran three characters, you got 7, 14, 21 strange coins. Average gun was 13. Armor um, part was 23. And if you played Nightfall enough and Zer brought duplicates, over time you would have hundreds of strange coins. You could buy whatever from Zer until you run out of everything. And you would have a good system of where you could get an exotic, potentially, from doing the Nightfall. Or you could get... Uh, and you could then get that, which you could then buy it from Zer. Alright. The exotic drops in Destiny 2 are shit. They drop it drops the engram. You take the engram to the skuns uh, to the cryptarch to Master Raoul or the other bird that's in the farm. You give her the thing, it will duplicate exactly what you've got in your armor set now. Nothing. You very rarely get something where it will be brand new. Legendary engrams will drop stuff you've probably already got. The duplicate rate in Destiny 2 is shocking. I once got three exotic engrams, decrypted all three exotic engrams, and had ex the three same items that I already had on that character. It's stupid. Now, there may be people out there that have not got a problem with this, but it, it is a problem. There is affecting a database of people, or maybe it's a subset of the database, or maybe it's Destiny 1 carryovers that it's happening to. But the loot system on decrypting engrams is shit. The guns are pointless. Better Devils is one of the best hand cannons in the game, and you get it within the first 10 minutes of playing it when you actually get into like the grindy game. The, the Swords, Quick Fang is one of the best swords. You get that virtually straight away. Some people might have had one deleted it and are trying to get a second one, and it's nigh impossible, because when you go to the gunsmith, it just duplicates all the shit you've already got. And... When Zer turns up, you buy all your exotics from Zer anyway, because he's been quite good in the past few weeks, and he's got rotations of all different armour and guns and sets and bollocks and all that lot. But you just de de destroy or dismantle legendary stuff, and they give you these exotic shards, and the exotic shards go to blah blah blah, these shards or legendary shards. You take them to Zer, and he'll swap it for an exotic. And just grinding the game, you'll have more than enough exotic shards to buy whatever you want. I've... The only reason I'm low on exotic shards is because literally I've stopped playing. The the blues only decrypt up to 260 or 265, and that is it. Then after that, it's all about adding mods on. Now, mods are a cool addition to the armor sets and the weapon sets that you can add mods on that will add 5 damage on. And, and then you add different mods on different things and it can make your light level increase. And then once you've got past kind of 270, 275, then you go into the 280, 285 drop bracket. And then you can see your progression go up. Then you do the raid a couple of times. You'll get a load of stuff and bosh, you know, you're at 305. You're, you're at 300, you stick, and then you're just farming mods. But that's it. It literally is. The end game. I had a... You know, Mr. Jobberman, we were having a conversation about a month ago when Iron Banana came out. And he spent 50 hours on Iron Banana grinding to get these stupid tokens. And it is a lottery system that you're entering into. In the old Destiny, you played Iron Banner, you won a match or you lost a match, but you get a random drop and that drop would be either a piece of armour or a gun. And... Then out the back end of that, you could go and unlock boxes or levels with a character, you know, uh, with Lord Saladin. And you could then go and get your gun or your piece of armor or whatever it is from him. And it would be a lower light level, but you could infuse it up. And you would guarantee that if you played enough Iron Banner, you would get a full armor set on a character and a full gun set. And Iron Banner was worth it. And then it would go away for a week or two. And then when it come back next time, you could maybe get a different set of armor or a different gun or a different shotgun or blah, blah, blah. And you, you would grind to try and get these complete sets. And you'd do it on three characters. So you'd spend a huge amount of time. 
Now, you grind to get tokens, to take 20 tokens to give it to Lord Saladin, who will then decrypt an engram, and that engram will decrypt into something. My mate, Mr. Jobberman, spent 50 hours and didn't get a full set on one character. And, and I've had that problem as well. You know, there's, you, you try and collect full sets. Hey, there's nowhere to see what full sets that you need of armor. Like a legendary, uh, like a, a legendary list of armor. Or, you know, when they used to have the old terminals that you could go in and see that this is your raid set and this is your exotic set. Now, you can see the exotics in the, you know, just to clarify, you can see the exotics that you've got in the vault. But why can't I have an exotic terminal where it's kind of like, or, or, or just a book of exotics that, you know, maybe I'll go and speak to Master Raul, and Master Raul has got, the, you know, these are the exotics that we know exist in this timeline, Guardian. Oh, great. So now I've got that, 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 and I need those. Or maybe when I'm doing the raid, you know, give me a raid terminal. Oh, I go down to that robot sweeper at the bottom underneath the, the new tower. And I can go in there and see a raid terminal and I can see all the different elements of the raid bits I need to get and what I have got and what I need to get or maybe with uh, legendary guns why can't we have a legendary gun book I mean the gunsmith surely knows what all the legendary guns are because otherwise he wouldn't keep giving us the shit anywhere and then it leads us on to the bigger problem with rewards is Everybody did the Nightfall because it was a prestige event. Not everybody could have the level or light level or skill set to do the Nightfall. And you got your little blue XP boost that would allow you then to get more packages from your Vanguard off and whatever. So that then you could unlock more purple engrams to get more better weapons to move you through the, the longer game grind at the end to get to max level. You do an... Ex you, you know... I haven't done a premium, a prestige nightfall. I don't intend to do a prestige nightfall. My mate did prestige nightfall and got the the, the halo that stares with you for a few days, and you got uh, I forgot even what it was. Oh, I'm just raging. It was just an emote or something like that. It, oh, just a little thing that says oh, oh he got a, a trophy to say well done. You've done the Prestige Nightfall. Who gives a flying fuck? I want exotics that drop out. Not, I don't want to go get bright engrams. and We'll get onto those in a moment. The paywall for collecting all your stuff. I want to collect exotics through doing prestige events. Like Nightfall. Like the raid. Go and get the raid armor and the raid weapons from the raid. Do the prestige raid. Which just mixes it up and adds, uh, adds extra dogs in. And does some extra bits and bobs. And makes a few extra enemies a bit harder. And right at the very end of it. Your raid armor is identical. It adds a purple glow. The raid armor doesn't add anything any benefits on it doesn't give you anything better for doing the raid if i would grind the raid to get all the armor if i knew that if i had a full armor set it would increase my damage to existing raid enemies by 20 percent because at that point you've done the raid that many times to get the full armor set i want to fucking munch my way through it to just get some stuff and move on you know, maybe there's just one bit of the package, the collection I'm missing, and I just want to grind through. But if you've got the full armor set, or maybe you get, if all the weapons that you carry from the raid, if you've got all the raid weapons, or so primary, secondary, and uh, heavy slot, are all raid, raid weapons, it increases their damage by 25%. So ultimately, you can have a 50% uplift in damage. It means that you get through the raid quicker, which means that then it could allow you to get. You're, you're the, the, to grind for that missing piece of the set that you'd know that you were missing because you could go and check the fucking terminal down near the cleaner droid underneath, but you can't do that. So literally, you need an external spreadsheet which has got all the weapons on that you've found from other sources. It's just bullshit. This is stuff we had in Destiny 1. And not only that, but on the Prestige Red, you got different armor sets that had different roles and different benefits to doing it. Oh, it just makes me so fucking angry that they fucked it up that they fucked the very bit that everybody loved about destiny one the grindy bit at the end where you play with your mates they fucked it up 
and they've made it a slot machine. You win coins, you put your coins in the thing, you pull your handle, you get something you've already got, you bin it, you trash it, and you do it again. And then when you run out of coins, you go onto the thing and carry on going into the game. The Prestige Nightfall is pointless, utterly pointless. The raid, Prestige Nightfall is utterly pointless. The Nightfall itself gives you some tokens, it gives you some stuff. I have no idea what full sets there are, what full guns there are. The one thing I could say about Destiny 1, I knew virtually everything about every set. I knew what I wanted to get. Destiny 2, I think I've got everything, but I'm not sure. I know I haven't. I haven't got all the raid armor. I couldn't give a fuck. I'm not doing Iron Banana because the armor doesn't do anything else for Iron Banana. It just looks good. If I've spent 50 hours grinding out some Iron Banana armor... I am banana armor. <laughs> Actually, that's probably they could put that in the game, but you probably get charged for it. If I've ground I am banana, I am banner to get a full set of armor, then surely if I go into I am banner again wearing a full set of I am banner armor, there should be some element of uplift or a, a, an elite group set that I can go in. So maybe you could have a two tiered I am banana set. That you'd have standard iron banner and elite iron banner. Elite iron banner entrance is that you need a complete collection of either weapons a a a active or a complete set of armor active. Then that way then, and when I say complete set, your character needs to have helmet, gloves, armor, boots. You have those, you can go into the elite set. Because if you've ground to get those, then fur dinkum, you can go up and it will put you into an elite tier of player. And that means then Iron, Ban Iron Banner gets harder. And then the reward system can be better. And it could say drop prestige Iron Banana events or uh, armor. But then when you see someone wearing that armor, you're like, fuck, you've done your work, mate. You deserve this. But no. No, no. Not complete lottery. 50 hours, not a full set. And as I say the truth, the own banana stuff looks alright, but it doesn't add anything. It doesn't increase a performance role. It doesn't increase this. It doesn't increase... It doesn't make your brain work and calculate things and wonder which is the bit that you want. It just gives you a better looking piece of armour. Which, you can go and grind blues, and some blues have better rolls and stats than some purples. And some of the exotic weapons are dull. You know, War Diff Coil is, is a good rocket launcher, but it's no Galahorn. It doesn't have that element of Galahorn. And plus as well, Zer sold it twice. Oh, God. Shotguns. Hawthorne shotgun. Just get a Hawthorne shotgun. It's probably the best shotgun in the game. Apart from the the exotic one that you can get from doing the raid. I've, I, I forgot what it's called, because basically I don't care about it, but... You know there is the, the there is the elemental arc shotgun that you can get from completing the raid and then doing the uh, weapons cash quest. I, I I literally don't care. It's that boring. I don't. It, I literally have no points. There's no quest that makes you go on a long path to work all these different things out and calculate and do a bit of grinding to collect some materials to then get this epic exotic thing at the end i mean they had an exotic rocket launcher the, the the one of the best rocket launchers in the game which is the closest thing you'll get to a galahorn is the raid rocket launcher the standard one and you can get that from a raid engram that your team can do and then give you through the clan engram system for doing the raids so it it's just pointless it's just if you're one of those people that is OCD that you want to collect everything associated with every system. So say you want to collect uh, the Mark of Optim Optimacy, I think it is, armor sets from Bright Engrams. And we'll get onto Bright Engrams in a moment because that's the big, the big bugbear. Then you don't, you know there's a set, but there's no way of tracking if you've got the full set. Because if you don't want to carry the armor around with you in your, in your inventory and you want to put it in the vault, then when you get something, you might not know you've already got it. And... Also, as well, the, the, the drop rate on loot doesn't account... It's supposedly got a smart system that can look through your armour and decide what you've not got or what weapon you've not got, and it drops you a replacement. That doesn't work. It's never worked. Otherwise, I'd have loads of exotics now rather than just having the same 6 or 7 on Xbox and the same 12 I've got on PS4. And none of the exotics feel exotic. Mida Multitool feels exactly like Mida Multitool. That's fine. Sunshot is the only one I think feels like an exotic. 
it's an, an exotic hand cannon and it feels like a hand cannon and it does amazing damage and it's so low. It's the closest thing you'll probably get to how Icebreaker felt, but you need to reload. And this is the whole problem with the loot system. Is it is a complete lottery. We don't know you might you might get fifty percent of everything in the game and go, I've got everything I need and I want. I don't feel like grinding iron banana out. I'm not certainly not gonna do it until they've patched all this. So you know, you you were and and this whoever whoever pitched the idea of winning tokens and give tokens to someone and they give you something, then you decrypt it and then that gives you something. It's just once shooting. They just they just want firing. Just find out who it was, fire them, and uh, and then ban them from working in the video. Unless you're going to work on something where that system works, but Destiny is not it. No, do not do it in Destiny again. All stats, numbers, and things in Destiny should be tracked in a screen in game that we can see and we can work towards another goal. The carrot, the the donkey and the carrot. Except now they've hidden the carrot. But they've told the donkey there's still one there and he's looking like fuck trying to find it when it's just there but they've hidden it. They've put a green screen up and he can't see it. I'm the type of person I want to know what I'm aiming for. And I want I might not do it all and I might feel bad. In, in Destiny Year 1 I didn't complete my record book. I was not bothered by that. I had a real good time getting to what I did and other people had more time to do theirs. I enjoyed what I did. I was a bit sad I didn't get to complete my record book, but hey-ho, mm, I'll live with that. I'm sure I'll get over it by the fact I'm raging over Destiny 2. Uh, I'm sorry if some of this is completely incomprehensible. It might seem like I'm babbling. You might be a big Destiny fan, and I don't need to go into these problems because maybe you are experiencing what I'm experiencing. I, I played Destiny 1 for three years. Virtually every day I, I bought loads of other games and didn't touch them on the basis of I was doing my weekly grind with Destiny and my daily grind with my, my well, I don't even go into the fact that daily grind's not there anymore they've got these stupid things that pop up in a menu it's just oh it just knocked me sick and I missed out on so much because I really enjoyed the first game for them to miss it and and to to take all the stuff that we love there's there's there are strikes in Destiny 2 I haven't played because I have not ground the strike list because there's no reward at the end of it. It doesn't give you anything. And unlike the first game, when I went into a map, I'd pull up Earth and I would go, bah, 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 all my daily, all my map things, all my adventures and quests and stuff. And then in the middle of it would be a strike dedicated to that planet, to Earth, Septic Prime. I would then go and do, uh, oh god, the one on Venus where you go and defeat the Archon Priest. I could then go to Mars and I would have Cerberus Vey Strike. I would then go to Saturn and I would have the Dark Cell, the Sol, the Dark Cell, Black Cell Strike or whatever it was. And on the map would be the Strike and and the Boom Bomb Brothers would, would be two Strikes. You might go to a planet that'd be two strikes as well. You go to the moon and there was a strike. Pyramidian is one of the best strikes I've ever done. It's not on the map. You can't choose it. You can't choose the event. There's no weapons that come out the back end of it. Like if you did Py Pyramidian, how cool would it be to get like a time rifle? That when you pulled the trigger, it would literally, the final bullet would make the, the person de-exist from existence so you wouldn't just kill them you would destroy that individual it would be it, just, it would be so cool but no they took all the strikes out the game and put them into a strike list and then they made the strike list light 140 or 240 or 220 or some low level i don't even care because it was so low that it's pointless to do so they've put a brilliant event and some and the levels in the strikes are awesome. You know, the, Sav the Song of Sabathun, the Pyramidian, you know, great things. Put them on the fucking map where they are so I can rinse and repeat. I used to love doing Omnigul. I would practice Omnigul. We would farm Omnigul. But now, there is, there is I know for a fact that there is a strike in Destiny 2 I haven't done because it has never gone through the map rotation in the strike playlist. 
the one thing you could say about Destiny 1 is by the time I'd finished the game, I knew every strike. I'd done every strike. And then I could pick and choose which one I did. Like the, the, the summoning pits. I love the summoning pits. I hated the summoning pits when, I pits when I first started playing it. But by the time I'd finished, I loved the summoning pits. Omni Girl was another one. I loved Omni Girl. Septic Prime in the end. Even Septic was good fun to do. But in Destiny 2, I don't know. I don't feel the need. I don't see them. Wait, there's a, a section on IO. And in the bottom right, left-hand corner, it says the Pyramidian. On the map, right there, in the bottom corner. You look at the map, in the bottom corner, Pyramidian. But the strike for Pyramidian is not on the map. It's in a strike player list. There's in a different section of the entire UI. Bungie, put the strikes for the levels on the fucking level. So that then if I want to play Pyramidian over and over and over and over till I get the ability to know what I'm doing completely back to back and sideways and upside down, that's my choice. It is just bonkers, some of the decisions. They've literally made it simple enough that anyone can pick up and play it, but simple enough that they've hidden all the stuff that made it fun to do. For people that were playing Destiny 1, Destiny 1 was about the grind for getting numbers, for getting right rolls, for getting right guns, for getting those extra stats that made your character better than the enemy you were facing or the enemy you were facing in PvP. And that's all been hidden. The stats are probably in there, but you can't find it unless you really go hunting. And that brings us on to PvP. So, when Destiny, when, when Bungie announced that PvP was going from 3v3 to 4v4, or 6 from 6v6, 6v6 to 4v4, and 3v3 to 4v4, and blah blah blah, everyone was like, ah, oh, that makes sense. It does make sense. Because, you know, they built one of the best PvP systems in the world in Halo. In, in, and the majority of the time now, you know, Halo's ranking system in Halo 2 and Halo 3 is considered one of the best rank ranking systems in gaming. Uh, uh, probably outside of Counter-Strike. I'm talking about console gaming, so not PC gaming. I know Counter-Strike's got a good competitive system as well. And, uh, you know, you've kind of got PUBG and all that lot coming in now and Fortnite and blah, blah, blah. But, you know, if we're comparing first-person shooters on consoles, then Halo probably still has the benchmark of competitive shooting. And having competitive rank matches, etc. And the, the 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 PvP element, I was really looking forward to. I wasn't a big PvP player in Destiny One, uh, so I was to some extent. I, I was. I really liked it. I like six v six because if you came across a team that was a little bit less coordinated than yours, or maybe it was just a team of blueberry blueberries put together, you know, noobs that had got just been put on a team, and you were running with four or five of your crew, then if they got, if your team got lucky killed, you know, spawn killed or something, and you came up, you could take four or five out, go blade dancing through them, you could chop them up, yay. You felt like a hero. You felt like a guardian. I was going to say you felt like a Spartan then, but you know that's not. We're not talking about that one. But they've managed to change it to four v four and fucked up the PvP system as well. Team shooting is a thing now. So if you get four people completely coordinated as a team, even randoms that can just turn around and but they've all got mics on, they can just go around and just. Concentrate on one of them. You can pick a corner. You can bed into a corner. And, you know, I, I forgot what map it's on where there's that little bit in the middle where you can either come over the top or around the side. You've got two clear sniper lines down and you can just literally pop your head up and pop over the top and you can literally wipe a team out. We did it. I mean, I got a, a 24 and 1 KD rate on one map. I only played four or five PvP games. I thought, this is friggin' awful. There's no gun skill at all compared to Destiny 1. 
Destiny 1, you had to be good with a sniper, or you had to be good with a hand cannon, or you had to be good because each one had its own specific trade. The sunshot can nearly cross-map cross, cross map shoot people. And with devastating effect when you get a headshot, you know, you couldn't do that with hand cannons in Destiny 1. Yeah, Destiny 1 had its faults with ghost bullets and some things flowing around, but there was, un you know, once you kind of understand Bungie, Bungie's logic behind it, it made sense. But in this one, it makes no sense. You don't get those heroic feelings anymore of, the, you know, there's one versus three and you can just hide and bang, you take one down, then whoop, you activate your super. They've not got their supers because you've got that bit of armor that tells you whether they've got their supers or not. And they haven't, and you have, and you warm, and then you just go in and. Or maybe just as you go around the corner, one's got a rocket launcher, and you kind of roll, and then you smash, and then you have this big heroic story where all your mates are like, fuck me, mate, that was amazing. Blah. You don't have that anymore. Or maybe you clutch it, or maybe you fold, or maybe you fold like a chocolate lampshade. It doesn't matter. But everyone had a story. You know, everyone had those type of stories in PvE and PvP. You know, there was a time when I was down to literally like no health. I had... We were, uh, we were doing the... A Dark Below raid. And, you know, or uh, Crota was at the other end and he had next to no health and, and my sword guy got chopped up by him and the shields were down. He was on his knees, had next to no health. And most of my team were either being battered or dead and there was just me and I had a rocket launcher and, and Crota died. And it's, hey, you felt good. You felt good about doing it. But in this, I don't feel good at all. I don't feel you can have those heroic moments because if it's a 2v1 and you don't fire, you don't hit at least one first, you're dead. Because coordinating shooting means you die sooner. And 4v4 just doesn't feel as kind of... I don't know. It, it, 4v4 works very well in Halo. But it doesn't work in Destiny for some reason. And it, that's the mental bit to think of. Halo as a PvP shooter at the moment is a better game than Destiny. And I am Banana. You know, Trials of the Nine. I never went flawless in Trials of the Nine. But I used to love trying. And, you know, there was loads of people that would just carry you to the end to see the lighthouse. And for me, I wasn't really fussed about that. You know, if I was going to do it, I wanted to do it on my own. And that's maybe stubborn. I, You know, I'd probably change that opinion now just so I could go to Mercury once and see what everyone's on about with the lighthouse. But, you know, we're going to go there in the trial in the Curse of Osiris. So, it the, the thing that got me with the new Trials of the Nine was it got tokens. And you did your tokens, and then it unlocked in a, a thing in the tower. So you 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 don't you put you know people would do trials of the nine. They'd maybe win, and then it would unlock a trials of the nine engram, and you would just go and pick it up from Hawthorne as a PVE player. I just go and pick it up when one of my team would go and do it, and I'd go and pick it up and decrypt it. Like oh that's great, it's a gun, and the gun would be look different, but it would just be no better than any other sidearm, hand cannon, or AR in the game. You know, Nameless Midnight, I think, is one of the best scout rifles in the game. I had that in the first four things I picked up from just doing the main game. From playing the main story missions. And to tell you the truth, I still rock it now. It's, you know, and that's the problem, is when you pick one gun. But Des Destiny was always about weapon refinements were from stopping you using meta weapons. You know, everyone says that in PvE, PvP, that MIDA is the meta weapon for, you know, winning gunfights. But, the, you know, I think that Nameless Midnight, with its explosive rounds, probably is just as good a weapon. And, it, and I think the damage on Nameless Midnight is more. So, you know, Trials of the Nine completely lost its point. It completely lost the thing that made it better, because the rewards at the end are no different than if you were to just go and farm... I don't know, public uh, public events. So, it, you know, it, it just feels as though the PvE element is lacking. And, you know, there's competitive and, and random play, you know, or free play or whatever it is. So you know, even the competitive element doesn't really have a competitive landscape like it does in Halo. It just, it just all it adds up to is that it looks like Bungie developed... A game that they knew that Destiny was a niche game, even though it had thousands and hundreds of thousands of players, and they wanted to make a game that was open to the masses. Tick in a box, you've done it well. They wanted to make PvP appeal to the masses. Yeah, to the free play, the the quick play menu system. Tick. Is it feel satisfied playing it? No. 
no, 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 no. It doesn't feel satisfying at all. And is any competitive play like Trials of the Nine and competitive playlist worth doing? No, not at all. Because all that you're going to get in that list now is the real diehards that want to do it, which means it's diehards against diehards, which they might see a challenge with each other. But, you know, for people like me that want to play PvP, the casual list doesn't really offer anything on there that's going to give me anything that's going to make my grind or rank up any better. And once you hit light level 20 and, and light level 305 or power level 305, there's literally nothing else to do. You can just put the game down and walk away. Uh, unless you want to collect anything, but then you can't collect them because you don't know what you need to collect. You know, quite simple. They've designed a very easy open game for casual players to pick up and then fucked it up for the rest of us that sunk hundreds and, and thousands of hours into the original one. The final thing, and I know that we're going to like over an hour now, but the last thing to cover off is bright engrams. Now, microtransactions in Destiny are not a new thing. You know, you could buy silver that could buy you stuff that was cosmetic to put on a gun to make your gun look a little bit different. Fine. Cosmetic items I have no problem with. You know, it is down to the individual that if they want to choose to buy a cosmetic piece of something for your gun or for your character then that's just personalization i can get behind personalization you want yours to have that luxury piece of something that nobody else has got or maybe some people have or all your clans got fine go for it that if you know what you're buying and what you're getting that's absolutely fine you know i don't see a problem with it and that helps to support a game that maybe they produce something that is not an exotic it's not something like that it's just a, a mere skin or a clad or or you know maybe it unlocks something that you know piece of armor a cosmetic shader for you know the shader system in destiny 2 works perfectly well for being to let you buy shaders you know if they want to sell shaders and it's specific shaders i'd probably buy a couple because there's something i, I want my characters to look like the the clan that they follow and we haven't even gone through clan wars. I'm not even going to touch it because it's just exactly more of the same. It's broken. You farm coins and blah, blah, blah. So microtransactions in the game are absolutely fine if it's kept at a cosmetic level and it's an optional extra and it's not rammed down your throat. You know, if you want to buy a dance emote, you want to buy a skin for a bike or maybe there's a sparrow that doesn't add anything to the game. It's purely cosmetic. It maybe you want to be a completionist and you want to add it to the list but you don't need to you know maybe it's if you're a completionist you want to get 101 percent of a book and that was the sparrow that does the one percent then fine you know cool but you know who cares you know that is if you want to do it bright engrams are a plague in destiny 2 they are a horrible paywall that has been put in to hide some of the exotic offerings that were made in the previous game by completing tasks like nightfalls and completing tasks day week in and week in tasks that you would do at a prestige level by dropping them behind this stupid system that offers these bright engrams which decrypt and they'll give you shaders or some other stuff and ships and ship shaders or transmat effects or blah 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 it is now if you've been living in the woods for the past week or you i don't know maybe you've been hiding under a rock maybe you've actually been just been playing other games and reading the news about how well stuff's going like assassin's creed origins you know maybe you've been doing stuff like that but there was a a, a reddit user uh discovered uh, i can't remember the exact name i'll try and put it into the footnotes on the youtube video discovered that the xp reward system for unlocking bright engrams was basically being managed by an algorithm so if you were doing long events like raids or prestige nightfalls or something like that that would take time you would eventually you would get the XP dropping at the rate that it was showing on the screen. Okay, and then once you've got a certain amount of XP, it would unlock a bright engram. Cool. 
Now, some people, pretty much like I, I'm assuming 60 to 70, maybe 90% of the database of Destiny 2, doesn't have six or seven hours to grind into a raid. Maybe three hours, maybe an hour and a half. Maybe you got it right down and you're really skilled and you get it right down to maybe an hour and a half. Let's say three hours for the average player. Right, that could be for me as a dad the only bit of gaming I could do in a day. Three hours. So I do a raid and if I get all the way to the end and I don't complete it, I may not get anything. Don't get my tokens, therefore I don't get my unlock. That means I don't get my thing. Maybe I've got some tokens, but not enough to get me an engram. So now I have to go back in and find a whole team again later on to do it from the point I'm at to then unlock my tokens to get it to to get the rewards. Right now, maybe you go. Hold on, I'm a smart canny player. I remember I could farm public events. Each public event would say take five minutes. Each one drops say, between two and five tokens. Each one of them would give me uh, of XP. They said 200. I've got to get to 40,000 XP. So therefore, if I grant uh, X in three hours, that would give me that. I'm already at 10,000, so I need 30,000. Which, working out on this drop rate, means that in three hours, I could get a bright engram. And that could give me some shit I really need. So it actually this this Reddit user discovered that the XP system on quick events was being managed. So it eventually reduced the amount of XP you were being rewarded as a player based upon the speed and efficiency at which you did events. So if you were say I don't know grinding public events and you spent four hours on them, you ultimately would only get 4% of the XP rewarded to you as shown on the screen. So you may think you're at 40,000, but in fact, you're not at 40,000, you're at 20,000. You might even only be at 15,000. Holy shit. So now, even doing the clan reward system on clan times, or when they did the clarion bell recently, it didn't matter. You can't fuck off for doing it. In Destiny 1, I know I could go in, I could pick my daily bounties up, go and farm them across three characters, get a shitload of XP out the back end of it, do Nightfalls on Tuesday, get my double XP rewards on my Nightfall caps, go off, do the uh, daily, uh, daily tasks, uh, I forgot, daily quests, on PvP and PvE, get those done, rank my XP up, and then probably hit three raids at the weekend, and bosh, you get three unlocks, probably across two different characters, to unlock more shit to upgrade your character. Now in this, you, you, you're not even upgrading the engram, you, you're going to get this bright engram, which most of the shit they expect you to buy silver, or to unlock silver dust, to then unlock the shit that you really want. And this includes things like dance emotes, exotic dance emotes, exotic bikes, exotic ships, all the kind of shit you should be able to get from doing prestige nightfall and other events as well. And, and don't get me wrong, you might get an exotic engram drop in Prestige Nightfall once in a blue fucking moon. It was probably rarer to get a Prestige, an exotic engram drop in a Prestige Nightfall than getting Galahorn to drop in Destiny 1. So, they've put this... Bungie obviously saw that the Reddit community and the, Bun the Destiny community were kicking off about this. They then turned around and said, oh, oh, oh dear, we've looked into the system. We're not happy with it. We're turning it off. And they did. They turned it off. And then they doubled the amount of XP you need to unlock a bright engram. So basically it was a big fuck you. Thank you Destiny player base. But fuck off. You're still going to have to grind loads and loads of shit. To get a bright engram now. Brilliant. So okay. Fine. And the pay system for these items. Which yes they are cosmetic. But they're exotic cosmetics, so they're going to count physically towards an exotic list. And now that we've found out that the season one's coming to an end on the on the launch of the Curse of Osiris on the fifth of December, that we're we're now at that wonderful point where this stuff even goes away. Now, yes, it may come back later on in Destiny. We've seen that happen before with weapons, guns, emotes, badges before in Destiny one, but that's not the point. I shouldn't need to wait till season four to unlock season one stuff again because that's just regurg regurgitating content. 
why does that stuff have to go away? Surely can't you just make the list of shit you can get bigger? Season 2 now adds 50% more shit in the pot for you to unlock. Great. Why can't I have a Season 2 engram? So I could get Season 1 and Season 2 engrams. I, I just I don't understand Bungie's logic. I know that they want us to, to work harder to unlock this stuff, but by the reward system being poor and the duplication system being too high, they're just not forcing me to play, therefore I'm not going to unlock it. And to be quite frank, some of the shit in there, I think there's two things I'd like to see. The salty the salty emote and the ramen shop one. Um, to be quite frank, if I get them, I get them. If I don't, I don't. That's how much I'm bothered by it. It'd be quite nice, but if not, nah, who cares? They'll probably come out at some point later on as re rebadged and reseasoned or a season pack that you'll just get. Or you'll have to work towards to unlock. It just it just it pains me. It really pains me. So what do I think about the PvP system? Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's better out there. There's loads better out there. Halo 5 PvP is better by a long shot. The, the gun system's cool, but pff, the rest of it, tat. The main game is brilliant, completing up the story. You really feel as though you're part of something. There are really some cool bits in the main story that will drive it back even further. That will, will make you want to come back and play the Imperial uh, level where you're near the sun. It's just one of the best ones ever. I'm not going to ruin it. I'm not going to go through all the details, but yeah, that's good. The grind up to, say, level 260 is pretty quick. And you have fun doing it because you still got a bit of challenge with the enemies. But then when you get to kind of 260, 265, the grind kicks then in to get to 290, 300. And then getting from 300 to 305 is just buy a couple of mods and bolt them on. And just keep a one kinetic, uh, one primary gun that's got the kinetic mod on and just keeping that. And you'll be at 305 in no time. And you'd probably never even have to play the raid, in all honesty. Just keep grinding stuff and it'll, it will just come over time. Uh, the bright engrams, the the end game content is shit. It is just terrible. It is just the, one of the worst I've played. I mean, I'm comparing it to Destiny One as well. I prefer Destiny One's because I think Destiny One's end game content was Nightfall and raiding, and it was just you could do it with your mates. You could book it. You could book times in during the week and do it, and you'd have fun doing it. And the, the you know doing the vault of glass week after week was fun. It was fun in the end. Uh, the 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 paywall that they've put in on the bright engrams and the whole thing, the whole shitty thing with the XP, is really really burned me now with Bungie. It's really done some damage, not collateral damage. It's not the points I was playing Destiny two last night. I quite like the idea of dropping in and doing some of the, you know, the 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 flash points and and stuff like that because they're just quick. You dive in, do it, and you get out, and you you've got some extra stuff for your character, but. They seriously need to fix it. And, and this has brought us nicely into the area of what I'm about to show you. So there has been... We're coming up to the 5th of December when the Curse of Osiris is due to drop. And the the first stage DLC, quite honestly, I've looked at some of the videos. I've read some of the comments on it. I've looked at some of the promotional videos. I've even read watched some videos where someone has shown me some of the missions. Uh, the Infinite Forest looks interesting. The main story is about two to two, three to four hours long, so that's that's okay, I suppose. But a lot of people are saying that the end game, the economy's not being fixed. The end game system's still the same. The grind goes from three hundred five to three thirty five, I think it is now three thirty without mods, three thirty five with mods, and. Uh, there's a couple of extra PvP maps and, you know, the Infinite Forest replaces and there's one specific public event that happens on Mercury now and we get to go to Mercury. So, I'm 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 going to play it before I give judgement on it. So, you know, I'm going to give Bungie the benefit of the doubt. Uh, the thing that I think I'm taking a lot of light from recently is that Bungie have been doing these streams and the three weeks leading up to before the 5th of December uh, so to place it into perspective last night it should have been the third and final stream in the reveal streams of the Curse of Osiris where we were going to go through some of the end game content and and kind of what happens after the main story and, and, and etc moving forward now because of the whole hoo-ha around the XP 
and the fact that they fucked up the end game and the economy system's broken and they've probably been hemorrhaging players to brilliant games like Wolfenstein 2, Assassin's Creed Origins, Christ, South Park, The Fractured Butthole's got a better reward system in it than the, than Destiny 2 has. Uh, what else is the? What else have that we had list recently? Uh, I'm just trying to think. Evil Within Two. I mean, Christ, COD's got a better reward system. COD's got a better reward system than Destiny Two. I mean, it's just it, it's it's games that I never played when they came out. I'll, I'll probably play now because I'm just bored with Destiny. Now, the outside of it has has all come down to that. Uh, I'm going to show you this. So this was on GameSpot. It was released about 12 hours ago. Now, I'm sure this is going to filter through to other media as well. The, the third and final stream for Bungie uh, for Destiny Curse of Osiris last night was cancelled. Uh, it was for tonight. It was for Wednesday night, actually. has been cancelled uh, due to the fact of the undisclosed XP scaling system coming to light and it being turned off and the doubling of the XP to unlock bright engrams and uh, oh, the, the 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 economy being broken, the end game being broken, the, the 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 everything past the main story and a bit of PvP being fucked, and nobody likes it, and the complaints everywhere. They cancelled the stream, which is a win. Let's no, let's not go by that. That's that's big from Bungie to cancel a reveal stream. Literally two weeks before it comes out is a big, big thing for Bungie. But not only that, but Luke Smith, as we all know, who is the uh, project lead or the key, the key lead at Bungie, who's been looking after Bungie too, and a guy who is not afraid of saying stuff that can uh, be taken the wrong way, shall we say? Uh, game director Luke Smith down here says they are going to be announcing some key changes coming to Destiny 2 and will be answering questions for the community and also looking at end game content so where is it I think it's down here the, uh, they're going to be addressing some of the complaints and the perceived lack of end game will be addressed I love how Bungie have put this. The perceived lack of endgame. There's no perceiving. There's no fucking endgame in the game. There's collecting a few bits of shitty stuff that all is virtually identical to everything else in the game. And you collect a load of tokens, put them in the slot machine and get some shit out the back end of it. That is it. And it is not a very complicated system. It's not pretty. And in all honesty, it's fucking boring. So... Uh... This I'll put this link into the video as well, so that in the notes below, so that you can all go and have a read of this. It'll probably be all on mainstream media. Uh, it'll all probably be on IGN and and Kotaku and all that lot very shortly. So it's going to be out there. But I'll put this original link on. Uh, it, I think it it covers off the fact that you know, for Bungie to change one of the key streams, for Bungie to to cancel a stream and then to get the game director and also a project lead to come on to potentially another stream or social media to answer all the complaints and furore around why we've paid so much money for a game where there's no fucking game in it. Christ. At least, you know, you know, there's been a whole hoo-ha recently around Battlefront 2 and around the end game content in that being too grindy to unlock things and loot boxes being in there to unlock certain elements in the game so that you can progress. But Star Cards being a whole separate, you know, the, the economy in that being fucked. But at least EA addressed it before the game came out. And they're working on it in the first month of it being out. You know, it's taken us two and a half months before we found a secret, before the community or one individual found a secret XP leveling system. After that, it's took days and now a week before we've got a definitive answer. And we haven't even got a definitive answer. Now, in all fairness, I am being harsh. And what I will do is I am just going to quickly log into my Twitter account as Dan Profit. Because my understanding is on this 
that there has been, and this is this is maybe not hot news by the time that you get to it, but you know it it should be. Oh, damn it! There we go. There, that's what I'm looking for. So it should be that Bungie has done an official statement as well on Twitter. I'm going to try and pull this up so that you can see it. In all honesty. Uh, Let's just see if I can find it. I know this is literally hot to trot news. Here we go. Notifications. So that you can see what I'm actually on about. In the fact of it's not on the brilliant. Uh, let me just do this. I know that this is not normally what we would see. But this has literally been developing information that's been happening over the day. So... Let's just click on this. So, here we go. So, this is what Bungie have posted up on the Twitter page. Tomorrow, we are planned to conduct the final stream prior to the launch of Curse of Osiris to show off some of the weapons and armor the expansion includes. Instead, we are investigating all our, we're investing all of our efforts into delivering some higher priority information about Destiny 2. You'll hear from the studio leadership about their assessment of Destiny All Up. They'll talk about our goals for the game going forward. And you'll also learn about how we're reacting to your feedback with some game updates that will arrive in the next few weeks. That will appear on the Bungie blog on Wednesday. Thank you, DJ. Hats off. Finally, they're going to start looking at the not just pushing out additional content they're going to do that anyway but if they fix the end game and they fix the currency system and they fix the current way in which we're uh challenged and also the reward system when we complete said challenges and the pathway to get to certain uh luxurious items or exotic items if they fix that third use i will don a destiny cap that i've got sat over there and i will say you know at least they listen you know bungie has taken its time and they've reacted correctly you know some people have been praising this it's got four point four and a half thousand likes it's got a one and a half thousand retweets you know this is just a small set of the people say you know we like this we like what we're hearing but i'm gonna save judgment i've given bungie so much leeway with this game for, th for so many years now when everyone was saying it was rubbish and there was no content i said give it time when the new content dropped and it wasn't quite all there give it time don't worry it's still early in the life cycle of a 10-year license remember 10-year license you know when the uh, when the um, wolves dlc dropped it was kind of like archons for uh, the the prison was really good and you know kind of we had all that and it, we you we know we got the uh prison of elders and it was like you know it's getting better and then when the taken king drop it was like holy shit that is brilliant and finally everyone was starting going destiny's a really good game you got blah 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 and it was everyone was getting into it there was a and, the, and then when even when rise of iron dropped it was all kind of like yeah well you know rise of iron's a stop gap you know it's good it's new content new places rebadged enemies repurposed things but that's cool because we know that the majority of the team was working on destiny 2 so we took all this talent from the first game made it work on the second game fucked it up before they launched it and they didn't even acknowledge they fucked it up and they didn't even think at the end of it this is quite dull even when the nightfall got buggered up three or four times so that's where we stand it's nice to see via stuff like this that bungie is looking and thinking and reading but it's only come about because they've realized that there are individuals in the community that are keeping their feet on the ground and keeping them honest if this hadn't have gone noticed, the XP boost hadn't have gone noticed, you know, I bet you any money we would have got. Season 2's Bright Engrams would have been all about, you know, buying shit to buy shit to get shit to complete collections that we'd still have no idea about. And it would be the guessing game as to whether we've got everything we want or needed from the game. And, you know, I'm still holding my judgment on the DLC content until we actually get to play it on the 5th of December. Uh, so overall what do i think it was a great opportunity but they 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 fucked it up at the moment they've properly broken a game that 
should have been easy. Take what you did in Destiny 1, put the foundations in place. You had all the foundations at the end of Rise of Iron and all the foundations in the Taken King for what you could have done to have built a franchise. This this could have been your Halo 2 moment. This could have been one of those video games that launched and everyone was like, oh, I don't believe the hype. And then a month later, oh, no, shit, the hype is real. You'd have had video game stores. You'd have had media outlets. You'd have had uh, uh, podcasts going on all about the game. And everyone saying what a great game it is and how big booyah, ba 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 it is. And why the end game content and the grinds the And all the stuff in Destiny 1 that was broken has now been fixed. And it's also been enhanced. And, you know, you could have had the legendary drop randomized system that says well there's standard guns and there's random drops at the end of strikes on each planet so that makes you want to do all those again and then you could have added into all of this and then you would have had a game that in all honesty i don't think i would have purchased another game for any platform but no you fucked it up so uh, if you are a big destiny fan and you're watching this video I know there's going to be bits I haven't covered off. And to tell you the truth, this wasn't going to be an in-depth review. I w if you wanted, uh, There's a thousand videos out there on the big wide internet that will cover this game off. They will do it brilliantly. They will tell you all about the in game and the why this and the drop rates and blah, 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 blah. I'm telling you, as an honest gamer, as a dad of kids, as a, as a husband and a father, and, and where my time is precious, that if you're looking for a game... That you can invest an, uh, an amount of time into. Where you can get rewards. For investing that time. Have a clear progression path. Where there is an optional way. To purchase items. Cosmetic items. To make your character look better. Etc. 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 Try Call of Duty World War 2. Assassin's Creed Origins. Hell. I would even go as far to say, go Shadow of War, because the microtransaction systems that everybody panned and said that it's ridiculous actually turned out to be implemented very well and is a completely optional system. You can finish the game for Shadow of War without ever buying a loot crate, but if you want to do it a bit quicker, buy a loot crate. It just gets rid of some of the grind. But if not, you can play the game and finish the game on the prestige setting with the very best ending by just playing the game. Assassin's Creed Origins, South Park the Fractured Butthole, hell, please buy Wolfenstein 2. Please, it is one of the best first person shooters out on the market. There's there's uh, there's so many other games out there that do grind better. You know, for God's sake don't buy Battlefront 2. Uh, well, buy it if you like the Star Wars universe and you want to play the first-person story. But until EA fix the progression system and put a decent... You know, if they're going to put microtransaction in, they make it in a way that it's not going to impede the game. Then for me, at the moment, lobby the game. The more we lobby it, the more they'll improve it. I paid 200 and odd pound for the ultimate set of Destiny 2. I've got the collector's edition. I've got the limited edition. I've got figures. I've got key rings. I love Destiny to bits. And right now at this moment in time. I'm looking at all that stuff and thinking I shouldn't have bothered. I should have just got the base game. And just played the base game. And tried it. And, and did an honest assessment of it. But. In for a penny in for a pound. Bungie's got the opportunity now. They've been caught with their hands in the till, with the, with you know, putting the hand down someone's trousers. HR have caught them. We're HR. We're the public. We're the general public. We've, we've, you know, some very sharp users have caught them doing nasty things. Now, hopefully, they're going to fix that. Hopefully, now they're going to look at the bit we've all been complaining about for two and a half months. Datto, Gathalian, Broman. My name is By. All those people have been looking at this and saying, content. You know, you, you know, there's loads and loads and loads of videos. I'm just telling you, know, you know, Triple Wreck, you know, Destin Laguerre, Fire Team Chat, all the people on the, all saying exactly the same thing. Good game, good story, fix some of the problems, created a load more problems, and the end game loot system is terrible, and there's not enough of an end game to the to to it. And you know, if you're if you're one of these people that find cosmetic items 
worth grinding for, fantastic. I'm not one of them. I don't care about the purple glow on an armor so that everyone knows I did Nightfall or the raid multiple times to get a set of armor that makes them no more powerful than I am wearing a set of blue armor or, or just normal legendary armor i don't care about the purple glow it just says to me that you've ground the raid out too many times because you've got nothing else to play i have i've got better places to spend my time with so that's what i think about destiny 2 we will be doing i will be doing an update to this after the curse of osiris has dropped uh i will be playing it on twitch as well and i will be covering this off on my twitch stream as well uh, when I go into it in more detail and show you some of the mechanics that I find utterly tedious, utterly boring and utterly pointless. I'll also show you some of the good bits as well because I find them utterly brilliant. Um, but we will also be looking at other games. So we will be playing and some of these. And as you know, I've got my Xbox One X. So we will be looking at Final Fantasy XV and the Fractured But Hole for South Park. We'll also be looking at Wolfenstein 2 and also Deadlight will be trying out as well uh so you know all that leaves me to say is thank you so much for watching this video i know it's been a one and a half hour rant by an old man who's just pissed off about things but i have been the biggest advocator one of the biggest advocators in my friends list in my group at work for for destiny 2 uh, for destiny as a series as a game as a platform for me and my mates to get together on and right now i my faith is weaning and waning away and i need to see improvements and if not then we're just you know destiny's in trouble the what so thank you i'm not going to go into it i'm going to wrap this up now thank you so much for watching obviously go and check out my website which is damnprofit.com uh, also check out my streams which are twitch.tv forward slash damned underscore profit mixer is damned and mixer.com forward slash damned underscore profit you can also obviously you know where i am on youtube but you can find me on twitter at damned underscore profit and i'm also on facebook just do a search for damned profit and you'll find me i'm the only one around so all that leaves me to say is thank you very very much for spending one and a half hours of your time with me on here please if you like what i'm saying Drop comments, drop feedback, good or bad, I don't care. If the more we talk about this and the more we put it into the community, the better it is because it will improve things. It will. Things will get better. But if we're not talking about them, you know, if we don't talk about it, it's not going to improve because no one will bring it up. You know, if you think what I'm on point with the video is as well, if you like this kind of time for a big in-depth rant about stuff like this and what I think about it, then I'll carry on doing these. If you think it should be sorted, just let me know. But thank you so much for spending one and a half hours with me. Uh, it's probably better spent than watching the Justice League, I believe. <laughs> but uh, we'll comment on that another day. But thank you so much. Uh, go and drop a like. Go and drop a follow. And I will see you next time on one of my What I Think About videos. And all that leaves me to say, see you next time.